Hey, peeps. Uh, it's not looking like it's gonna happen tonight. Does, does the president know why we're here? Don't Look Up was a tragically funny movie that we still can't help but think about. Now we're going behind the scenes to bring you the best improvised moments from the movie. Check it out. Ariana Grande can definitely improvise. Number one. What's more impressive than improv? Improving in a song. Ariana Grande's best improv moment was when she sang the song for the first time. Her first take blew director Adam McKay away because she came up with these lyrics on the spot. Turn off Fox News cause you're about to die. Actually, she came up with that whole bit. Grande was hired to sing. Director Adam McKay had no idea about her ability to improv like that. So you can imagine it was an exciting moment. Also, is it weird that we're totally obsessed and can't stop listening to the song? Number two, childhood ruined. Tyler Perry was called one of the biggest improvisers in the movie, and those scenes at the Daily Rip were chocked full of improvised quips between his character, Jack, and co-host Bree, played by Kate Blanchett. Just a couple of the lines they ad-libbed were, I had no idea that Subaru made telescopes. And a cute little back and forth about Xanax. Listen, <laughs> if you don't have enough, we all have enough around here. Which she responded with, a spoon full of Xanax makes the medicine go down, right? That's right. <laughs> Number three, can this be added to the Blu-ray's bonus content? Meryl Streep improvised 30 different phone calls that she had to hang up on. Associate producer Stacey Roberts said every single one of them started off with something like, no, I had implants. I got them taken out. And at the end said, I love you, goodbye. Sadly, all that work was for nothing because the bit didn't make it past the cutting room floor. Number four, nobody knows what this thing is. There was an earlier improv in the movie that set up the mid-credits fate of the president. She's told by Elon Musk, ah, uh, we mean Peter, that she'll be eaten by a Brontorac. We don't know what it means. They were shooting the scene for the second launch in the bash control room when the director proposed that they improvise. Meryl, in character, said, It got me so excited to know about my own death. I want to know. <laughs> Every time they improved it, the name of the creature changed. A what? Well, it influenced the mid credit scene, which had to be refilmed. Originally, the characters realized that the pod carrying the workers blew up, so they all tried to pay each other to build them a house. Number five, cruel, Jason. Cruel. Jonah Hill is such a comedic master that we one time dedicated an entire day to him just improving insults at me. Are you surprised? It was amazing. It was really, really hard filming with Jonah. Because he made it his mission to make her crack. One of the lines, which really is downright cruel, came right after Kate found out the president had decided to do something about the comet. He said, <laughs> He just looks so bad. <laughs> but make no mistake, Jonah did not like insulting J-Law. He's a teddy bear. Number six, is an adult's ability to play pretend or a child's ability more impressive? The Sesame Street bit where Leonardo DiCaprio gets honest about the fate of the world and yells at the camera? Improvised. And the little child crying, I don't like him, he makes me sad. I'm sorry about that. Also improvised. Good on you, kid, for keeping up with the A-listers. Number seven, stuff. Glorious stuff. We can never have enough stuff. Jonah Hill's character Jason's whole prayer for stuff was totally improvised if you couldn't tell. Sure, stuff is cool. There's dope stuff. But you know what's cooler than stuff? Existing. Amen. Number eight, the completely inappropriate fist bump. Jonah's line, Thanks for dressing up. Was another comedy gold moment from the guy. Just imagine meeting the president's son and you're greeted with a fist bump. Number nine, one of the weirdest lines in the movie came from a character without a name, a friend of Timothée Chalamet's character, Ewell. Can I touch your hair in a non-sexual way? Totally improvised, totally awkward. But to be honest, it's some awesome looking hair. J-Law picked it out herself, despite knowing most people hate the look of the short bangs. Hideous as it may be to some people. I was just like, oh, there she is. And she's right, it totally works for the character. And hey, at least the guy asked before he touched it. Number 10, the best kind of potatoes. DiCaprio's original line was about sweet potatoes. Instead, they all partook in a little improv about searching for fingerling potatoes. But the best line of the little bit definitely came from Chalamet. Fingerling potatoes? Yeah, let's oh. 
Love fingerling potatoes. Let's Number 11, the place that inspires the most amount of improvisation in the world. The first scene in the Oval Office took two days to shoot. The first cut of the scene was a whopping 16 minutes long, and the director never once got bored of watching it. Unfortunately, when it was that long, that early in the movie, it slowed the plot to a near stop. A couple of lines that made it in the scene were, You're breathing weird. It's, it's, uh, it's making me uncomfortable. I'm sorry, I'm just... And, I can't think of another president that I'd ever want to see in Playboy. Number 12, this strays pretty far from the beaten path. From here to the end, these were all sourced directly from a comparison between the final script and the movie. It was pretty tough to follow along, with the actors improvising so much. The lines where Kate was chatting with her boyfriend over the phone went so far off the rails. He says, Do you have an issue with my mom? Is that what this is all about? Because he gets cut off, but when it comes back around, says, She asked you if you were a lesbian. She did not say that you were a lesbian. This set up the beautiful response from Jennifer Lawrence. Look, I'm, I, can I sit down with your mom to have lunch in like seven months? We don't think it's necessary to say why this weirdly specific and distant comment is hilarious. Number 13, when you meet a superstar, what's your first thought? DiCaprio's quip, She looks a lot smaller in person, doesn't she? about Riley Bina was totally of his own observance. We wonder if that was his actual first thought when he met Ariana Grande. Sometimes observational humor just can't be written into a script. You need to see it to think it. Number 14, nobody knows Randall like Leo knows Randall and Randall doesn't understand memes or how to comfort women. All of DiCaprio's reassurances towards Kate becoming a meme were improvised. Here's the lines. I mean, look at that. That's so unnecessary. And is that even allowed on the internet or I think that's Photoshop, Kate. Number 15, he was totally chosen to go to space because of his astronomically good looks. We're gonna need a hero. We're gonna need a pilot. Ron Perlman's got a great body, or at least his character Benedict Drask does. So says the president and Dr. Calder. Dr. Calder admits, you know, I used to date him. That was totally improvised, and so was the banter. He's got a great body, too, don't you think? He does, he really does. Yeah. Number 16. The door slam in this scene was made even better. What if we have to go to the bathroom? Her question was supposed to be left unanswered. Instead, we got the awesome bit where Jonah, as Jason, says, We'll lay out some newspaper for you. Grab you a can of Febreze. And also, his devious bit of false hope, where he asks, You wanna come? Yeah. Boom, door slam. And just to end things off, while we aren't positive if this was improvised or just a last minute addition, we wanted to include it anyway. Initially, the last line is a simple conversation about grinding coffee. I grind my own beans, yeah. Which is still there, but we also get DiCaprio saying, We really did have everything, didn't we? That one was chilling and a good note to leave off on. Be grateful for what you have, but more importantly, take care of it. What part of Don't Look Up made you laugh the most? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching.